Today I'm going to be sketching these three houses in Murano and I'm going to actually change this up a little bit, put in some figures walking, maybe some tourists. But I think this is a very nice scene to start off with. Something simple and uh, you know essentially we've just got the three houses, a bit of the footpath here, a bit of the sky, but the houses dominate most of the scene. So let's start off uh, firstly by, by going in and just marking out some basic details for the house. So what we'll do is firstly add in a line where we want the footpath to begin. So I'm going to just estimate it to be around here and just draw a line going across the page like this, like that. Okay, that should be roughly enough. I might need a bit more later. We'll see how we go. Uh, but the main thing we want to do is create separation. So we've got three houses. We know the first one ends roughly about, let's see, about two thirds of the way up the page. So if we go a third, uh, two thirds, roughly about here. So I can draw a line going across like that. And I'm actually going to use, I'm going to use a thicker liner for this one, going across the page like this. Okay, all the way across so that we've got uh, the roof of that top one. Then, of course, we're going to have to mark in the uh, where the second one sort of finishes off. I'm going to guess around here. So that's just a, a bit of a mark indication there as well. Um, also, kind of comparing it to, this, to the width of this building, we do want to make it perhaps a little bit wider around about here. And then we've got, of course, another building here on the edge as well so we can draw a line roughly going down the page like this okay just a loose sort of line I, I tend to draw these lines a bit wiggly and people ask me why I do this and the, the reason why it's just more of a stylistic sort of thing and also it to keep it sort of gives it a little more character makes the, the drawing look a bit more interesting so rather than just draw straight edges everywhere but that's up to you okay so here we're coming down we've got another another side of that one so that's the three buildings okay so we've got them all fairly separated out now uh, again we just want to create a little bit of detail on top of the roof so over here I'll start drawing in perhaps this top part of the roof so we know there's like a kind of white section that goes out like that this one here of course uh, starts out as a bit of this triangular shape here goes all the way up comes down and then uh, goes across like this and up there there excellent coming down here and then a few of these little bits of these roof tile sort of marks on the rooftop like this oops they're more sort of like this actually there they kind of overlap with each other further along the back end uh, of the area so here we got another area here it kind of cuts over left uh, right here then it kind of goes up and we have this uh, so upper half upper story sort of part of the building I'm gonna make this a little more triangular as well like that okay something like this we can even go in and start drawing in some of the shapes of the window okay so you know, here's a bit of that window here and uh, you know there's a bit of this uh, what do you call it blinds okay so little lines running across like that okay there's a blind or something running along inside it's kind of not facing uh, not completely straight like that and then there's a darker bit in here okay that should do the trick there's a bunch of flowers or something just outside that window as well okay a lot of this stuff we won't need to hatch in or do much to it we can just wait till the watercolors a little bit later okay so that is looking good now uh, let me just have a look at this building there are little pipes and things running down the edge but uh, I'll just bring that back area of the of it um, across a bit more perhaps put in a little roof
rooftop here like that just in pen just outline a, a teeny bit more than I have same here with this aspect of the roof there you can just add in some smaller reinforcements there to draw out some more detail especially on the rooftops okay this one here we do want to make sure that the roof uh, is a little bit it sort of starts around here like this just below this building the roof of that building I mean and of course with this rooftop we can put in these kind of tiles overlapping uh, tiles just this pattern will do the trick okay there um, so over here let's bring this back like this okay and um, cross like this here and get that to kind of disappear behind um, this building a little bit as well okay and just again these tiles simple sort of squiggly marks on top of the rooftop so you can just do them in this sort of manner I'm not too fussed about how they uh, look exactly okay just a few of these little marks to indicate what's going on there is a, a chimney or something over all the way down the back and I'm gonna add an indication of that in like that okay something like that there are little antennas and stuff coming off the rooftops as well okay now this building here on the far left you can barely see it okay I'm just going to separate this remaining space into two bring this one across like that this can be part of the uh, chimney that I'm going to draw in here comes down just going to hide behind that building and uh, this here like that let's have a look yeah, like that there we go just a bit of a, a chimney or something like that there's even an air conditioner or some type of structure here in the roof which I'll put in close by next door like that I know this building comes up a little bit further and uh, essentially just disappears off so it's not a huge deal really this one here it's just really just marking the edge of the the um, the scene but I've straightened it up a little bit more and uh, here we go we can just put in some of these little windows now in pen there's one here another one here leave the these kind of white bits in as well the frames of the windows which are really important you know it looks like there's a door or something down below but also what you've got are these pot plants which are just at the base uh, so a little bit of this uh, space here for that pot plant but behind that pot plant I'm gonna put in a door something like this okay just a little indication of that door and of course you know seeing as we're working on pot plants and objects that are kind of in front of all these uh, buildings and what have you it's a good idea around this time to start putting in everything in the front and that also includes figures so I'm actually thinking how about we put in some figures first if you've got some reference photos uh, of figures as well that tends to be a good place to sort of start off and uh, give you an indication of of uh, the poses and things like that but it's not a you know it's not a huge huge sort of deal before I do that I think I'll just mark in the basic outlines for the windows and doors just so that we have an indication of the you know the estimated size of how we got to draw these figures we don't want to draw them too big or too small so what I'm doing is I'm separating out the buildings. If you see here, they're not exactly, so from the top of the building to the bottom, there's a little line cutting across just above the two windows at the bottom. 
and that line is not really halfway through the building it's a little bit less than halfway so that's why I've drawn it uh, a little bit further down it hasn't cut that building in half exactly it's so important to just measure things up uh, properly otherwise we will end up in a position where everything is just too big or too small so um, this is the door you know here just a rough position of where I want to put that door we've also got windows so you know here's another window and I can just start drawing that one um, you know look at the other one as well and start to measure the basic sizes of them as well have a look around and uh, this one too up the top there fantastic and this other one here too there that's another window we do have a bunch up here as well for this other building so let's go ahead and put some of these ones in firstly just you know like, like I said just the squares this is a general shape of them first I don't want to uh, I don't want to overdo it just uh, get in the basic shapes first because I do want to focus on getting some figures in there's another one uh, we know the door is kind of here looks like there's a little shade or something on top of the door like this yeah. coming down oh, this is a kind of curtain or something there so just a bit of a, this curtain or something and there's a pot plant that forms a kind of entrance interesting kind of gate thing um, i won't draw that in just yet here's the other window on the left roughly where we want it to be the one on the right here like this and you know that's most of the details now we just got to repeat it for this one so and keep in mind that the windows they don't have to be uh, exact as per the reference photo you know I, I change them around a little bit and I uh, don't pay you know exact precision to where they are in the reference as long as they are kind of lining up in the same spots along uh, the other houses in relation to the to where they lie on the other houses you're going to be fine what you don't want is to put a little window for example do this window all the way down the bottom or something like that it would just look out of place create it too large or too small um, th there are certain tolerances that you can just work uh, within and you'll be fine okay so this one is just about done I just will put in the again this little shade or something up the top like that and then of course the door okay and there's a uh, and, and again another kind of a curtain or, or a kind of thing just a flowy sort of curtain running around the door which is interesting um but the doors do have this kind of white uh frame to them still just like the windows do okay so now that we've got you know most more or less all the basic indications and I think we can be more comfortable actually putting in some of the figures and some of the details so I'm just going to go see if I can sketch in some figures uh, walking across okay we'll keep them pretty pretty kind of loose so might have one um, let's have a look we might have just some walking across for example or we could have one sort of facing the uh, the camera or a little bit closer uh, front facing so you know for example here's a person there and uh, this person may be a little bit closer to the front of the, the scene okay there's the bottom of the shirt like that okay and just a little bit of scribble for the some shorts there and here's a one of the legs there another leg like this 
like this perhaps um, in a very basic arm here uh, maybe just coming across the body actually and then maybe they're holding on to like something like a camera or something like that here okay there other arms sort of running by the side let's get a backpack or something going on a bit of a, a shirt collar um, you know we can get another person here you know a little further back as well and you know put in a couple of legs there as well perhaps they're walking along towards the front too okay and notice what I'm doing as well is that I'm making the heads um, appear in areas uh, and also the body appear in areas where there's just more white space now if you are doing figures it's usually I find it's better if we do them um, essentially do them before we put in some of these details but if you're going to do them after like what I'm doing here I find it certainly helps if you put the heads and the bodies kind of in areas where there's more space areas of white space so just like that the person's head here you know I've got a, a leg here for example coming forwards and this leg you know backwards like that okay this person just walking forwards perhaps like this and um, um, their arm here okay something like that we can really just go um, go as far as we want really to just put in a few more and you know this could be a person just standing by their door over here okay a little bit further back okay these ones are uh, closer forwards I think another one perhaps moving across here would be good as well just to get a movement little movement across in the scene so here's a leg and then we'll get a leg in at the back here kind of like that okay looking good now again looking at the the shadows it looks like the the light is coming from straight above and there'll be a shadow kind of cast in the ground so the whole point now the remaining part of the drawing is just putting in some additional bits and pieces that you um, want to add in. So, for example, you know, we've got these windows and the shutters. You know, some of these shutters we can start adding in. A little bit more detailing in the windows, for example, like this. A little bit more detailing at the bottom. There's little pot plants and stuff down the bottom as well that you can play around with. Uh, you know, I do have other pens that we can pick up and start uh, colouring in bits and pieces as well. So uh, I'm not entirely sure how this will look, but if we just add in, say, like a bit of black here on the windows, these uh, the shutters, that helps you get it in a sort of a dark shutter pretty quickly. Though I don't think I want to do this for all of them. Um, though I really like using this pen, it can be a bit overpowering at times. And also it prevents you from later on with your watercolours getting in some more, yeah, just a bit more colour into the, the windows and details. So this is why I, I just try to use this sparingly. Okay, Inside the windows, just get the frames like this. There we go, and on top, of course, we've got uh, you know the, the proper frame of the window, that white frame there. Okay, just draw that out a little bit more. The curtains are inside. A little bit of a rough sort of curtains in there as well. If you've got a, I've got a, a pen that's kind of running out of ink and getting a bit of some of these scratchy marks in there, they do help to indicate that. So. Something like that. Okay, fantastic. Um, and, and again, these plants here, they kind of form uh, a bit of this pathway into the house, the sort of archy gate kind of thing here. There, there's more 
pots on the ground all over the place really there's um, just uh, different positions and with different plants and all that kind of thing so I'm gonna just draw in a few here and a few over here as well like that without a whole lot of detail just a bit of thing um, bits and pieces here and there you can go forever doing this stuff I can go forever anyway but uh, at some point you're gonna have to think hey it's time to stop and get on with the actual painting but uh, you know some of this stuff is quite important in terms of um, just getting through an indication of all these um, all these windows and things like that in here some of them are kind of half closed which is interesting so great How can we speed this up? A bit more of that black pen in areas like this. put a chimney in the top section here just a rectangle a bit coming down running down into the top of the roof there and then it sort of comes out like this okay that's it's about all I think I'll add in it's all these little antennas just popping up all over the place but the, the good thing is that they help kind of connect everything together connect the scene together more there fantastic I have that 1.0 I've got a 1.0 pen I think that will also give a you know a good mark as well um, not as dark as uh, not oh, not as obvious as the larger marker but uh, I think this will just help me to put in some more of this detail quicker it's more the frames of the windows I think that require more a bit more uh, detailing So we'll look at this one, window. Window and some bits in between the frames, this white frame going around the edge of the window there. Um, this one as well here. This one kind of just cuts around that figure and uh, I think this black pen will be good to get in some of that. Something like this. A bit here. And here. there that's another bit of the window yeah, uh, like that 
Let's have a look. So you're kind of just combining these kind of lines which are of a harder edge and a more defined edge with lines that are um, less defined. I think that's a good strategy. Um, you know, another thing with these windows is that, uh, which are these curtains and stuff, is that they do have colours in them as well, which I will probably just get in with watercolours later. I will just put in some more darks around the curtains and underneath the doors and and what have you as well. Um, I think what would be good is yeah, just getting in uh, the base of these buildings here in the back and a very basic fashion moving across there. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and like I said, you know these plot plants here, they some of them need some more detailing and some of them not so it's just how much you think you want to put in there and imply what's happening so you know feel free to put in as little or as much as you would like essentially um, let me just color these shorts the shorts of that guy in like that okay a look around and seeing if there's really anything else that I could add that would help strengthen what we have here. I don't really think there's much else, um, but just looking at strengthening perhaps some of these lines. Um, you know, you do notice as well the buildings have separations in them, these little pipe pipe separations that run down the rooftops like this uh, perhaps go from the gutter up uh, sorry and then down the page so um, some of those separations I'll put in like that um, just trying to see if I can spot anything else there is a some laundry here someone's laundry which is just hanging across which uh, I missed out before but I think this is an inter interesting little addition so they're just shapes just think of them as little kind of rectangles moving across like this and they kind of go upwards a little bit near the end here um, and then they kind of just disappear off to the right hand side um, but there is a line kind of connecting them up like this okay here and Always remembering that it's just shapes that we're putting in here. It's nothing, uh, certainly nothing, um, nothing out of the, the ordinary. Just shapes, rectangles, triangles, squares, circles. Um, that's how I kind of look at all of this stuff. It's the only way um, to reduce it down and to start off. Um, drawing otherwise you end up looking at the complexity and you end up not even starting at all so i think we are nearing the end of the drawing process uh, you know i think a bit of extra darkness here would be good for this door just behind that section like that okay it's all quite dark back there actually and yeah, another thing is perhaps the uh, some little little um, guiding lines across the ground like this. So that's the kind of vanishing point in the center. And this this will just help to. Uh, could we just create a bit more depth in this scene? It doesn't have to be perfect. Just lines emanating from that center point. Okay. Great, I think that should be it. I'll start on the painting now. Okay, so we're going to get started 
with a couple of smaller brushes first, a number six and a number eight around brush. So we've got a few different colors here and we don't have to use the same colors. But I do, however, want to start with uh, like an orange color. I've got some conacridone orange here on the side and I might mix that down with a bit of yellow ochre as well. I tend to like mixing my colors together and just getting a kind of interesting mix that um, just combines a few different colors. You know, I've even got a bit of a little bit of burnt sienna there as well. Okay, but let's go ahead. I'm just going to cut around bits and pieces and go all the way up to the top of this little house. It actually goes right up here. Like that. And remembering to cut around the windows as well. It's super important. Like that. And we've got to leave those white frames on there because they can be so easily colored in if we're not careful. And I'm just gonna, you know, go around, color in what I can. Uh, you know, I've already actually accidentally gone over one of those frames. That's okay. Coming downwards like this. Okay. Further down the page, um, the yellow ochre is really good. It adds a bit of granulation in areas, so that's why I kind of drop it in, and it also just mutes that color down a little bit. And I'll just wet this door frame very quickly, um, or this area inside the door anyway, very quickly because I want to get in some wet and wet bits in there. But before that happens, I'll just go in and you know just put in a bit more color around the edges of these of the building like this. Okay, I'm using a number six round brush. This is making it a lot easier to cut around some bits and pieces. I was going to use a number eight, but this is actually a good choice. Okay, so dropping that around, spreading it around the place like that. I think that's pretty much the you know, building covered. Now, what I'm going to do is just pick up a little bit of pyro orange and just drop a bit of it in, running down like this, and hoping that will bleed in um, and leave some little bits of white on there as well. Okay, that's about all that I want to do. Um, you know, you can add in a little bit more on the actual building itself as well if you want to increase some of that vibrancy um, in areas. It's not a huge thing though. We can put in another layer over the top later onwards. Um, fantastic. Now comes time for the other buildings. I've got a bit of lavender here, lavender color, which is a very light kind of violet, uh, purpley sort of lilac color perhaps. So it's going over the top and, uh, you know, just like that. Now this is a granulating color as well. So I've just got to be careful that I'm leaving enough, oops, enough of that white on there. I've actually gone over a bit of that, but that's okay. Um, paint I'm using is fairly thick, I'd say it's about half water and uh, half paint because the hue that we're, hues that we're using with this lavender and also the orange, they're naturally very light hues anyway, so do find that you need to use a bit more paint to get that strength. So just coming down, um, actually this is that same color as well. And the main thing is that I'm just remembering to cut around the window frames, some of the plants like this as well, which is great. If you get a bit of mixing, that's good. Just let it, uh, let it mix. Okay. That's here. Fantastic. And you know, I think what might be good is just to add in a teeny bit of ultramarine, just a bit of darker ultramarine in some of the areas, especially near the windows and things like that, and the uh, perhaps the bottom of the building, just darken some of these areas down a little. 
Okay. Maybe out here as well. Right. Um, looking good. I'm going to add in a little bit of uh, burnt sienna to the rooftops. Here, just a bit here, a bit here. Drop that in quickly. Some over here as well. Edges of that roof. Just a light wash. Even up the top there, a bit up the top there. Um, I do have some ultramarine which I'll drop in here. It's a very dark blue there. I'll let that kind of spread and blend in. Uh, and then back to that same color up the top drop in a bit of that burnt sienna where we have it up there okay fantastic um, I'm gonna go with a bit of coolness here as well for that chimney just a little bit of purple or coolness up the top in there I'll leave that bit normal. Um, this house on the left, I'll go probably more cerulean blue. Okay. Just cerulean around the edges like that. If I can use this larger brush, it might take me a little less time to put this uh, paint in and you know encourage a bit of mixing as well around the edges of those figures the door frames that kind of thing okay and further down this kind of just have coolness in the door, like that. Put in a few little splotches of darker paint in here to um, create a bit of interest. Maybe some, you know, just a bit of an indication of shadows uh, coming from above, that kind of thing, underneath some of the windows there. Okay, maybe some purple here, here, but the windows do have a bit of a brownish color or I don't know, just some kind of color in the actual uh, areas of the windows, the shutters I mean. So I'm just putting in a bit of, little bit of colour in there. The others do actually have a slight tinge, a cooler tinge in them. Like that one does have a cooler tinge in some of these windows like that. So I'm dropping a bit of that colour. It's kind of a purplish colour. That's all. Drop that in. It's ultramarine with a bit of uh, perylene red. Okay. Good. Might get a bit in here as well, just some little colour in here. A bit in there too, sort of inner bits. It's not just too bright, um, running too too much brightness running through, and uh, yeah. There we go, just a bit of a bit of colour through there. And of course the roof of this one as well. A bit of this colour, which is burnt sienna. Light wash. Okay, so the buildings on the left, this is where I'm just gonna go. Um, change them up a bit, a bit as well. So we'll go with like a purplish color.
just a darker purple for this one directly on the left here. Like that. Running down the page. It's darker than the other buildings, this one here in the back. And then the one further to the left, I'm just going to pick up some of uh, more of this perlene red to get in a, a red color in here. I'm not going to make it too obvious. It's a kind of dulled, uh, muted red, because there is some blue in there actually um, already. So just a little bit of that. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to go with some sap green here for some of these plants. I do have some undersea green as well, which is a beautiful kind of darker granulating sort of green. So uh, some of this, some of this is good, it just helps bring a bit of this uh, color into the scene. I've actually forgotten to get the door for this part in. I'm just going to put a light wash over the top like that. Okay, now for the sky, it's just a light wash of cerulean. So I'm going to use a non-granulating cerulean blue for this. Going up at here at the top, and we'll just shift this around the page. Very light wash of this color. Just shift it around. Because we've got some areas of the sky, uh, of the rooftops that haven't completely dried yet, what you're going to get is a bit of this kind of mixing. Um, in areas, which is fine. It actually looks better if it mixes. Okay, last bit here on that right hand side. You can already see this bit's mixing a little bit there. Shift this bit of paint over. There we go. Fantastic. That's the top done. Now we'll move down to the bottom and I just want to get in um, a warm color at the base. Maybe some, just a bit of yellow ochre. I think a light wash of yellow ochre will be sufficient. I've got some buff titanium as well. I'll put in a bit of that. Buff titanium is just basically a creamy sort of white color. It looks a bit better than just leaving it completely white. And it desaturates the yellow ochre even more. Even the yellow ochre is a fairly desaturated color in itself. The figures will put in some colors for them as well. I'm going to use a smaller brush for this. Um, it's not a huge deal really, it's just a matter of uh, preference, but I do like putting in things like warm colors in front of uh, colors that are a bit more, you know, complementary. But it's uh, certainly up to you what you choose. You know, here for example, I might think, hey, let's put in some yellow. Yeah, for that figure here in front. 
maybe a bit of yellow here for this one as well, which has kind of turned greenish, if you ask me. Um, it doesn't matter because we're actually going to add in some neutral tint as well in spots to just uh, subdue, subdue this down a little. Okay, leave this to dry and we'll get back to it. So final part here, I'm going to add in all the darks, so little shadows. I'm going to invent some as well, just some shadows underneath the rooftop, uh, maybe a little bit more on the roof as well, uh, you know, a few birds. Also these figures I, I need to bring out a little bit more. And same with this shadow here on the ground. So. Let's go ahead and um, firstly start off with a, uh, a basic shadow color, which I'm going to use. I'm going to basically use some ultramarine plus a bit of uh, red, pyral red. Okay, and this is just going to give me uh, a nice little purple color, which I can hopefully use to get in some of these shadows. So I'll just mute, dull this down a little bit, water down that, sh that color. We want it very light. Um, something like this, so you can see, just underneath some of the windows, like that, and I'll put a bit under here as well, here, there, uh, you know, maybe a bit behind the towels, like that, there, kind of casting a bit of sh uh, a shadow or something like that, a bit here, um, how about a bit underneath this rooftop like that. It's just doing one line and that's it. We're not trying to um, do anything too much more. Uh, I just have to go over some of them if they've dried a bit, a bit funny. Um, now you will notice that the, the shadows get kind of darker as you move down the page, sort of around here, especially where it's almost difficult to see the original color of the building um, and this is the key so we want to darken down at the bottom more and by doing this what we can do is start blending on uh, the, the shadows at the base of the building okay and where the figures are with this uh, darkness on the building so that's what I'm trying to do I'm just darkening a little bit more at the base of the buildings and if it gets too much, just soften up, soften some of these areas a little. Um, you know, even here, that's there's a, there's a bit of a dark area on top of this door. Look at that. Just keep mixing in some water in there if it gets too dark. Um, you know, here, a bit of darkness, like that. There, here. Like that, uh, maybe here as well. Okay, it's very subtle, but it's a an important step. It will make that building pop out just a little bit more, give it more uh, dimensionality. That bit on the white as well at the back there. bits of color on the rooftop just on the sides where there might be some shadow okay mainly if you look at the edges of the roofs there is just the slightest bit of darkness and shadow there and that's going to be um, a big make a big difference just adding in that little bit in there okay Bit of a shadow up the top like that. Um, these buildings here are going to just, again, darken off in some of these areas. Just 
soften up the shadows in the back a bit. Creating more shadows in the back, um, hoping to get in a bit of this um, effect on these buildings, maybe like a shadow just crossing the building here, especially. Okay. We'll blend that downwards and the ground is going to have quite a significantly dark shadow in here which I'm using some neutral tint as well as uh, this purpley kind of mix so um, blending everything downwards okay especially where these figures are here it's just a dark sort of line around the edge, the base of the buildings, like this, but I still want it to be light enough to be uh, transparent, so certainly be careful here at not kind of overdoing it. Good. Um, and then we've also got some of that shadow that just cuts across that left hand side here. So here. Like that. And then we've got a bit that sort of just comes out like this. Like a rooftop or something. Shadows uh, formed by something off the side. and the figures I'm going to be using some neutral tint get the legs to come down okay just a bit darker some areas and uh, create a bit of this shadow here on the ground pretty dark shadow and I probably will have it running slightly to the right okay change my mind here and, and I've decided to put something running a bit towards the right and I'm, that means I'm gonna have to change around the shadows for the buildings as, as well just a little okay so that that one I like that one on the right hand side I think this one here needs a little more work okay there's a figure here in the, in the back just get in some more a little bit more here okay and what I mean for the windows now is that because we've changed that source, we just got to create maybe a little bit more of a shadow running towards the right hand side of that window like that. There. Which uh, actually may make it more interesting. bit in the windows as well. OK. 
Hey, put a bit of red for the faces. Just a, just a little splotch of red in there. In the arms as well. Fantastic. How about a bit of hair? A bit of brown. Or you can use whatever colour you want. Some of these little directional lines on the ground I'll just emphasize out more. Little birds in the sky just uh, creating these small V like structures. Like this. can even bring back into play some gouache for example if you want to lighten up some of the clothing on some of these figures so for example you might want to make this one a little lighter you can put some white gouache in here in areas and suddenly this person's got a white shirt or something like that and that will dry off a little bit as well and, and look a bit duller once we're finished Great, and I'll call this one finished. If you like this video, check out the playlist on the right. I release new tutorials and art supply reviews each week to help you progress faster in your watercolour journey.